closed. So let's get this out of the way now. We took a wrong turn. Like rookies who have never driven in the mountains before, we didn't read the directions given to us by our hotel. So basically where we need to get to is like 15 miles that way. But since we went the wrong way, we have to go three and a half hours around the other side of Mount Rainier to get to where we're supposed to be. Crystal Mountain is a sleeper of a mountain. You may have heard of it, but you've probably never visited unless you live within a few hours drive. Crystal has the only gondola in Washington State, a few hotels around the base area, one of the best ski bars on the planet, and not to be missed inbounds terrain. After six hours of driving, we finally arrived late at night and found the resort buried deep in powder and empty of people. The next morning, we watched from the window of the hotel as the parking lot slowly filled up. Snow was forecast to fall throughout the day, but the lines were still short. At 8 o'clock in the morning, we met up with local free ski coach Wayne Gravy and ski school director Sean Bold and prepared to load the gondola for a few laps. The Mount Rainier gondola is the crown jewel for skiers and boarders at Crystal. Opened in 2011, the gondola rises nearly 2,500 feet to the mountain summit and provides access to the Northway chairlift. From that one chair alone, skiers can access nearly 1,000 acres of terrain. As snow continued to fall, we loaded the gondola for our first taste of crystal. What we didn't know was pro skier Drew Tabke was on his way and about to run us into the ground. Just another powder day in Washington. Yeah, it's my favorite place to ski. Best lift access ski in in the region, and uh, we get a lot of days like this. As the day came to a close, we skied down to the Snorting Elk Cellar for pizza and beers. Respect the sauce. We sat around the large fireplace, toasted our new friends, and listened to their stories about Crystal Mountain. Outside, the snow continued to fall, and it was becoming obvious that tomorrow would be a deep powder day. Going to bed that night, we anxiously awaited the chance to ski untracked lines from the top of the mountain all the way to the base. Let's go ski some powder! True to his words, Sean ushered us onto an early gondola first thing the next morning. Riding up, we scoped out our lines and discussed the best way to take advantage of the mountain's fresh snow. Packing up our bags, we checked the weather for Stevens Pass, our next stop, and saw a familiar sight, 
snow. Stevens is looking really good. They've got about 20 20 ish inches in 24 hours, and it's snowing heavily, and it's supposed to continue to snow heavily through tomorrow. But 39 inches with up to 5 feet at higher elevations? The Northwest had another surprise in store for us. <laughs> 